Alright, cosmic. <laughs> it's okay. No! <laughs> it, it's okay, huh? <laughs>Hey guys, Cosmic here. Patch 19 is out, and if you're wondering if it's worth downloading Armored Warfare again, let me save you some time. Yes. Yes it is. There's a lot to cover, so let's start with the account reset. As many of you have seen in my last video, I did indeed reset my account. Of the gold I spent on camo, on battle hardening tanks, is back. There isn't a reason to not reset. Thanks to the reset, I was able to get every tier 10, and every tier 9 save for the crab, but I don't really usually play armored fighting vehicles and scouts. So just do it. Trust me, it's worth it. Now as many were aware, there was an accuracy nerf coming. One of my biggest reservations was that AW would become a game that would require daily prayers to RNG Jesus. This most certainly is not the case. Accuracy as well as accuracy stacking has seen a nerf, but moving accuracy has seen a significant buff. Finally, all the shots on the move that I'd always want to take while I was patched, playing in patch 18 are actually now doable, and it's not just a dice roll to go out and make those shots. Furthermore, new weaknesses as well as the size of these weaknesses have compensated for this accuracy, so I don't really feel like there is a big difference. Take uh, the T-14 for example. Before, its weaknesses were the driver's hatch and the spots covered by the ERA right before the driver's hatch. Now the weaknesses are the turret ring, bottom of the lower plate, and the ERA spots once the ERA has been destroyed. Lower front plate and turret rings are consistent weak points on most MVTs. However, they're not so massive that you can't play around them by using cover, wiggling or dancing around, and doing other evasive defensive actions. This is awesome in my book because it keeps the interaction of attack and defense between players while they're brawling. Now PvE has changed also dramatically. It's actually a challenge thanks to the introduction of ATGMs to the AI's arsenal. There will now swarm objectives with powerful ATGMs, making certain missions very challenging and requiring actual coordination. I absolutely love the added challenge, and it's the first time in a long time that I'm having enormous fun playing PvE. It's a lot more exciting when the AI has a real chance and failure is a real possibility. I'm hoping PvE will continue this path but also step up the rewards for harder difficulties and for overcoming overwhelming odds. NA has seen a revival of PvP with games dropping from afternoon to very late night and it's been a blast. I'm very much enjoying the balance changes. The tanks are fast, mobile, and feel fantastic to drive. The gunplay feels tight and precise. It's just a pleasure to play. One thing I did notice though is NA doesn't appear to have skirmish versions of maps enabled. I don't know if RU or EU servers have these maps in rotation, but i really like to see that enabled. Having too large of a map with too few players can be frustrating as players get sprawled out too much and then just get focused down, giving an overwhelming advantage to one team really quickly. AW is now a very different beast than it was before, and I'm finding I really like these changes, and I'm really liking how it is now than it was before. As it stands, some tanks are better than others in patch 19. For tier 10s, it depends on what kind of playstyle you prefer, but as an MBT player, I think the XM183 is currently the best tank in game, followed closely by the T14 Armada. The A3's ready rack allows for two quick successive shots which can absolutely devastate an opposing player. A well-coordinated team or platoon can just melt tanks using the A3. It does have a magazine style reload. However, it's not too terribly long. For me, it's uh, 16.2 seconds with retrofits and skills. And you can reload in between shots if you have the time, and it's only uh, half the reload's time. So you could use a normal firing pattern of fire, reload, fire, reload, and then unleash a devastating one-two punch when you're ready to finish them off. However, the A3 has one big weakness. It has a painfully slow turret. Mine is only 17.7 degrees per second. So the A3 is a little bit better as a medium range MBT as opposed to just purely a brawler. It can be very powerful in a brawl, but you have to be actively thinking about your weakness of your slow traverse, uh, turret traverse speed and playing around that. Now the Armada no longer has the 152. However, its 125 is still very powerful 
and it has swapped roles with the Abrams from back in uh, patch 0.18. Before, the Abrams was a great jack-of-all-trades, while the Armada ruled the burst damage. Now the Armada is a great jack-of-all-trades, while the Abrams rules the burst damage. Whereas the Abrams can be sometimes a little bit awkward in a flyby maneuver, the Armada is very comfortable with rushing tanks, and its speedy turret traverse goes up to uh, 44.6 degrees for me, so you are extremely mobile when in close quarters brawl, night fight kind of situation. One thing to keep in mind though is the back of the Armada turret now does only 60 damage, or takes only 60 damage, so you really shouldn't bother with shooting the back of its turret. Now the Chally 2 ATDU is going to be another popular tank this patch. However, hold down, it's actually more vulnerable than the Armada. It has a few weak points on the top of its turrets which can be exploited by other players that need to keep aw be aware of. Combine that with its gun handling which isn't better than the Armada's or the A3's and honestly if you're getting only one or two tier 10's I would recommend you get the T14 or the A3 first. Finally for a roster of tier 10 MBT's there's the King Leo, the Leo 2AX. Well, unfortunately, the Leo's a big loser this patch. He just fails to outshine the Armada. Anything the Leo can do, the Armada can do better. And the Leo has just worse armor, unfortunately. And its turret ring, I think is, it's for some reason, it's very easy for me to just penetrate it consistently from afar. And its side armor is also very easy to penetrate. So if you're thinking about tier 10s to get, my recommendations are as follows. A3, T14, and the PLO-1. Furthermore, if you're looking for fun tanks to try out, I definitely recommend you check out the new T80U, which is just a pleasure to drive. The Dragoon, uh, the, Dr the Dragon 125, which is basically like a Sent 120 on tracks and somehow better armor. The Merkava which now actually has uh, an autoloader, it has a clip, and the Leo 2A4 Evolution, which is also fantastic. So yeah, overall I've been having a complete blast. If you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you dislike it, give it a thumbs down. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. Catch y'all next time.